Hey guys, welcome back to the vlog, welcome back to the channel. In today's episode, we're gonna be picking up the 458 Speciale. It's finally done after about a year and something. Now the car has been with Ferrari because we were trying to get warranty for the carbon intake plenum which sort of deformed. So now we're on the way to finally pick it up. And then we're gonna be heading down to Second Skin so that we can get the car wrapped. I never really was a fan of the yellow paint. So today we're going to change that color and unveil a new wrap after it's done of course. And hopefully it doesn't flood on us because this rain is horrendous. For those of you wondering where the Pista Pilotti is, it's right here and they're almost done with it. Adding some carbon details, new wheels, some carbon details here and there. They have an extra gurney flap for the wing and the taillight covers are carbon too. Ordered all the carbon bits from Novitec. Alright guys, just finished chatting with Dennis. We're gonna take the car out, finally. We have some plates already, although we're gonna blur that out. Haven't driven this car in so long. Thanks, Dennis. I have not driven this in ages. Oh my god, missed it. It's a change of plans. We won't be bringing the Speciale to second skin yet because the M4 is having issues, so I don't have a car to go back to the farm. So. We're gonna be keeping the Speciale first and road tripping it back to the farm and hopefully we can just bring it down when the wrap arrives at second skin. So, change plans. We have the dreaded check engine light on and the front nose lift is not working. We just left classic speed and sadly we have to go back to Ferrari and bring the car back. I don't know if they're going to be able to fix it because I can't bring it to the farm without the nose lift working which means we're probably going to have to borrow a loaner car so I don't know what they have in store and I'm hoping that they do have a loaner car I did message them already so we're going to head back to the car shop real quick just to sign some documents and then we're going to head back to the Ferrari uh, dealer to check the car out and scan it and see what else is wrong I was asking if we can bring the Pista home, but they said they're still doing some finishing touches to it. So which means all the plans that we have for the Speciale are on hold again. Oh, sucks. I was really, really excited to get this car wrapped and change the color. It's a Supra. What do you guys think of this car? It's got a GR badge. Hey guys, another Ferrari 430. We're back in Ferrari and they are scanning the car. This is the loaner from Ferrari. It's a Levante diesel, right? Yep. Levante diesel. And we have to leave the Speciale first for a few more days. But it's a good test drive today. All right, guys, we are leaving. Thank you to Ferrari for the loaner vehicle. Super useful right now because we do live so far. Good morning, everyone. I might as well continue the vlog and do a short review on this Maserati Levante loaner car. I haven't done any research on this car so I actually don't know much about it. All I do know is it is white and it's got lots of buttons. Let's go!
Tons of boot space. This is four sacks of horse feeds. Auto gate trunk. So this is the Q4. I actually don't know what Q4 means. Maybe it's all wheel drive. Nice and packed. Very famous Trident logo. Looks like this has been used for the racetrack already. And let's get out of here. Start button is on the left like a Porsche. But Porsches have keys. Look at this interesting feature. It tells the time and it tells the time. Same time. I wonder if that's because you can have different regions and different countries. Not sure how useful that is. Beautiful infotainment system displayed here. The screen is very glossy, response is very fast. And the aircon controls are here, the buttons are here. Sport mode on a diesel and suspension, so I guess it's sort of good for track use. Tiptronic gear knob, this is the controls for the rest of the car. And then some more buttons here. I think this is for the sunshade, let's find out. Yep. Trunk opening, parking sensors, lights, more buttons here, there, and there. We have a single stock to control everything here on the left side. So this is the signal light and the wiper at the same time. Nice paddle shifters are aluminum. Visibility is super easy, the hood is very short and yeah, easy to drive. The B pillar or the A pillar doesn't really block anything. The windows have a frameless design so you get that sport car feel. The dials are easy to read and yeah, um, I need to figure out how to scroll through the screen. Off the bat, I know already this car has air suspension because the ride is actually nice and compliant. When I push the sport mode, it actually gives it a growl and sharpens up the throttle, stiffens up the suspension and handles like a sport SUV. Scrolling through the trip meter, this car gets an average of 7.1 kilometers to the liter. All right, we are on the way. Initially, when you start up the car, it does sound like a diesel, but once the engine is warmed up, you actually can't hear the diesel sound. Driving on the highway is very easy. The car is very quiet. You don't hear much of the road noise outside. Suspension is very compliant, but it doesn't feel like Range Rover quality of like softness. It's actually a little more sporty than that. Cruise control is on and so far relatively easy. Now that the car is warmed up, let's engage sport mode. I just read the signed release form for the car. The car is a 2020 Maserati Levante with a 3 liter V6 diesel, pushing about 276 horsepower into an 8 speed automatic gearbox. I can only assume that the car is four-wheel drive. Now the power of the car is pretty adequate. You feel the torque and because of the extra gears, you're always in the power zone. So in terms of a daily driver, I think this is the most economical option that you can get. Although I don't think you'll be winning any drag races with this car, but it's enough for you to get by through highway traffic and to do small overtakes because it's got good amount of torque. I don't know if you can hear the sport mode, but we'll do a short pull. The exhaust note can only be appreciated at low RPMs. When you get to the high RPMs, you actually can't hear anything. And it does remind me more of a Subaru Grumble at low RPMs. We just got off the highway and that was a pretty pleasant drive. Now we're going through some city roads and hopefully we're going to get some clear roads again after we pass all these small towns. The 
brakes on this thing is pretty good. It's able to stop the SUV in just a matter of short time. And the interior is pretty nice because I don't hear any creaks and rattles from the cabin. So, so far we're about an hour and a half in and we have about an hour more and I feel great. I don't feel tired. The seats are comfortable. I actually don't know if there's any features with the seats. Do they massage or anything? I'm trying to feel on these side buttons. And nope, it just has lumbar and some adjustments. So maybe no seat massage in this one. The sound system in the Levante is nice. It's crisp and clear and loud enough. The controls of the radio are easy to adjust. Initially, I had a complaint that the volume knob was down here by the shifter, but upon feeling the steering wheel, you have two hidden buttons on the left and right side, which is the jog and the volume control. Even though it's only my second day to drive the car, it is very, very easy to maneuver. It's nimble enough and small enough to weave through traffic. So that's a big bonus because yeah, anyone who jumps in this car can easily drive it and be comfortable with it. One thing I don't like is the parking sensors are so sensitive. When we pull up the traffic, it just turns on. Even though I switch it off here in the toggle button, it just keeps beeping. Especially when people are close to the car or another car comes beside you, it starts beeping. For USB ports here in the front, I only see one. There's nothing in the glove box. I'm now headed up the mountain, so I'm going to engage the sport suspension. And here's the pull. Turbo surging. Going up the mountain with sport mode and sport suspension is actually very pleasant. The body roll is controlled, the suspension is firm, and the car does like to turn and handle so definitely this is a sport SUV rather than a comfier version where the Range Rover slushes around when you're taking corners this one's actually fairly planted although when you are in sport suspension the car does drop down and you can really feel that it does get firmer in terms of uh, I guess ride quality so far, I haven't found anything negative about the car. I've been enjoying the drive up and I'll keep driving and find out if there's anything else I can point out. All right guys, we just got to the farm and we're gonna leave the car here first. I love this frameless door design, very sports car feel. Ah, we're gonna go have breakfast and then we're gonna review the car even further. Just finished breakfast, now we're gonna park the Maserati and go over some of the external features that I like about this car. Let's talk about the external features. The car does look decent. It does have a very Maserati presence with this very wide grill. Back of the grill, you can actually see that the radiator has shutters where it actually lifts up, I guess, when you're moving because it needs to feed air through the radiator system. The lights look very good. The fog lights we didn't have a chance to use because we drove in the daytime. The hood has a nice power bulge shape. Moving on to the fenders, you have these fender vents, which is similar to the uh, GT cars that they have. Wheels and tires look okay. The brakes look like I guess standard sliding brakes. I love the window profile because of the frameless windows. Not sure about the chrome door handles, but that's part of it. This rear section does remind me of most of the modern sport SUVs like the Porsche Cayenne. At the rear, we have this quad pipe tail exhaust. The rear actually looks very decent, but I think very similar to other sport SUVs. Cabin space is pretty decent and the trunk space is pretty decent because we did bring four sacks of horse feeds with us. Um, some negatives about the car. After a while in sport mode, I think it rides a little rough. So you actually go back into normal mode, but you can't have the aggressive sounding exhaust without having the sport suspension on. 
or is it just because the car does drop when the sport mode is activated? We're gonna drop the car now because uh, I want to show you guys what the air suspension can do. There's a loading height which will bring the car all the way down. Right now the car is set to off-road height which gives us extra ground clearance and a while ago before I raced it to off-road height it was actually at entry level height which means it's all the way down. It looks pretty decent for ground clearance. The back seat has very decent leg room. I'm 5'11 and I can easily get in and out. The seat in front is all the way back and I have about 2-3 to three inches of leg room. Sorry, two inches of legroom. Seat's pretty comfortable. The headroom feels okay. I have maybe about four inches on the headroom and about this on the legroom. I brought the seat backward in front, which means it's all the way back in a comfortable position where I can even sit in front, which means two 5'11 people or at least six foot people can actually sit comfortably in front and back of the car. Here in the back we get two more USB ports and a cigarette lighter along with a aircon vent system, this little pocket here and a side pocket there. You also get cup holders right here and a nice armrest. Doesn't have any soft closed doors so these are just regular closing doors. So doesn't suck it up like a S-Class or a Range Rover. Okay, I think I'm gonna end the vlog here about my initial impressions of the Maserati. Hopefully next week we can continue to do the 458 video again, but for now I'm gonna end the vlog here and sorry if this video wasn't the 458 content that I wanted to shoot, but right now we're back in the farm and that's the car that we have. So I'll see you guys again in the next video.